I'd like to show you some of the nice things, nice plants, nice flowers, nice foliage and interesting things in my garden at the end of March. Uh, we call this the spring bed and you can probably see why it has lots of spring colour in it and earlier on there was a lot more with earlier bulbs but we've got lots of daffodils we've got this lovely brunera which is a variety called the jack frost and we've mulched the bed with uh, well rotten foot manure and we're keeping the selenines here as well and these are all self seeding Lenten roses or Helleborus orientalis. Down further, we have lots of wild garlic, and it's the spade leafed one, as you can see in there, and some Narcissus tete a tete, which means head to head. Got a couple of these wood anemone or anemone glanda, but I've got lots more of them elsewhere. And lots of ground elder and weeds coming up as well. Uh, we don't use chemicals here anymore, so it's quite difficult to keep control of them. This little heuchera is called Amber Waves. And over here, this used to be full of a ground cover comfrey, and it took a lot of work to get rid of it. Got birch trees above here and below it's a little viola and more tete tete and then bluebells to come along and after that some granny's bonnet columbine or aquilegia this is the cottage garden here in front of our cottage We just recently split these trilliums and this is one of them. This one is a pink one and it's got these kind of blood like splashes on the leaves. It's quite cool. And looking across here to what we call the secret garden with the pond. And the bed at the back that looks like nothing at the moment but in the summer will be explosions of herbaceous growth down to this narcissus a white one and this one is called palia so it's a daffodil or narcissus called palia one of my favorites and little primroses here purple varieties More cool daffodils with the orange center. This is Magnolia stellata. Magnolia stellata is meaning like a star shaped or a star flowered magnolia. And it's a slow one. This one's there about 10 years and it's only this size now. We like euchres here, more of them. Give me a Japonic Arubella. I absolutely love this. This is Lords and Ladies or a type of Aram lily. But look at the variegation in it. I think the lines are amazing. And you've got these mottles as well on some of the leaves. We got this from a friend's garden. Uh, it was an old house that's 300 years old or so, an old farmhouse. And in the garden it was growing wild. Got some more hellebores here. Another variety. And then this one here is a late one. Considering the fact that it's a Christmas rose. It's still in flower now. And we're nearly at Easter. This is a white trillium. Trilliums are like a North American equivalent of bluebells. So they grow in the same conditions. They grow under trees in big carpets of these colors. 
and I think they look like the demigorg from Stranger Things. <laughs> they've got these frills around the edges and their face that explodes open. Really cool. So these guys grow under trees, they like dry shade. They generally come into flower before the major amounts of leaves come on the trees. So they do all their work and photosynthesize before we get to dense shade. This is another Brunera. And I think this one is cheerfulness, narcissus. Over here, it's a very shaded spot. And we've got pulmonarias or lungworts. And back in medieval times, uh, gardeners then believed that plants had signifiers that God had given them. And the spots on these leaves suggested that maybe they could be a treatment for lungs. And if I'm not mistaken, I think there is some merit in that, that they have uh, medicinal value for lung complaints. Up here, just starting to get flowers on it, is Acer aconitifolium. And this has a beautiful autumn colour, bright red. And we've got Catoniaster, a weeping one. And then if we can step in across this pathway, we've got lots more hellebores, more pulmonaria, and these beauties here, which are the wood anemone, or anemone blanda. Quite pretty. As I say, this is what we call the secret garden and it's got a lot of perennials over here coming up like little spikes out of the ground is solomon seal and that will look fantastic in a few weeks and this is the pond and i've just cleared this out we have some, some frog spawn in it but it doesn't seem to be developing correctly i don't know why so i cleared all the algae out of here this is jack frost again and some cyclamens and uh, this is wood sorrel um, and it's got a very tangy flavour to it you can eat it I love these these are what you call shuttlecock ferns and for obvious reasons they look like shuttlecocks Matiuchia strutiopterus and they run underground and produce all of these runners and in a few weeks they'll have taken over a lot of this bed but they look fantastic. Jumping over here, I love this too. Look at the beautiful orange flowers of this. This is Epimedium, and again, Epimedium likes a kind of a shaded position, and the flowers come out before the leaves really develop. So you need to put down last year's leaves in order to show the flowers. But they're fantastic the flowers. Or shuttlecock ferns and just a cowslip. It looks really pretty in the pond. And over here, this is a plant called Erythronium. And it's got these lovely leaves and what they call Turk's hat. Turk's hat flowers. So the Turk's hat flower is kind of sitting like this. Erythroniums are quite, they're okay, they're not too delicate, but they are not that common. Some more Brunera. And another Trillium, and this one is pink. It's just starting to flower again. Looks like the Stranger Things Demigorg, I think. What an amazing plant. And we've divided that this year as well. This big stump is a Gunnera manicata, actually, sorry, it's Gunnera tinctoria, and it is a giant rhubarb, and the leaves will get to about three feet, maybe one meter across, and it will be right up here by the summer. Uh, this is really cool, I think. So this is a 
fritillaria meligris, which is a snake's head fritillary. And look at this flower here. They look like snake's heads, as you can see before they open. That's the snake's head. And then they open out to this beautiful shape. And these guys like wet, and this bed is quite wet most of the time. In the summer last year we had a bit of struggle to try and keep it wet. And our vegetable garden is a little bit messy at the moment. But um, we've been changing along here. This is one of the things I've been doing while I've been off. Making a wider path and putting down like a hardcore base. So we got a well drilled and all of the stuff that came out of the ground was this hardcore and gravel. And I've covered the area with it. And then this is our little mini nursery. And as you can see, see there's some of the trilliums we divided. And some of the plants that we've divided as well. Down here is a new building. And it's the goat shed. Uh, and I built this for free, apart from the roofing. It's all pallets and recycled wood. These are the stables I built a few years ago. And down looking down to the cabin so what's happening in the tunnel at the moment well we've got spicy salads here they are different mixed spices and this is spinach over here we have coriander some new lettuce that came from the college uh, similar to what we have there. Um, this is kale and this is more coriander. We've just put potatoes in here so they would be earlies like uh, Charlotte's and Home Guard and this is some chicory. We've got rocket here and this is land cress which is quite nice and tasty the type of cress. This is the Fig, and it's got some little baby figs on it. More potatoes. And the little guinea pig guys. There. This is the way I prune my grapevine. And we get well over 100 bunches on it every year. So I prune it back as hard as I can. And as close to the stem as possible. And you can see now that it's starting to sprout. There's a new shoot. Yeah, it's doing great. And the dust all over these strawberries is what we call diatomaceous earth. And it's so dry that it will dry out uh, the skin of a pest and kill it. So it's a good control for pests. We've got some seeds here on the go. So this is Nobby and Osho. Two donkeys. And Pippin has escaped through the gate, as he always does, so he shouldn't be in there. This is Polly. Hey Polly. Hey Polly, what? Good girl. And this is the goat shed. Jackie, that's Jack, and in the background is Willow, and now we've got Dwight, yeah. he's the rooster, and his girls, and look at you, hanging around, showing off, this is Finnegan, hey Finny, and this is JP, also known as Jackpot. Hey lad. And these are the ducks. And there's the boy who's escaped through the gate. He probably squashed himself through. So I built this 
all from recycled wood from my neighbor's uh, garden. He had all this wood there. So it's got platforms because the goats like to be on a height and you know, all steps that were around. And everybody likes it in here, including JP. Hey, Japes. And this is the cabin down there that I built. I'll show you that some other time where people stay staying at the moment. This is the flowering current. It's covered in pink flowers at the moment. And it's covered in bees. And a type of wild rose. And a little pulmonary in the background. We've got lots of different varieties. They're kind of close on this little guy here. And pretty cool looking tulip. Here we've got a nice little combination. This is just uh, lemon balm and cucumber beside it. And then we've got a type of hellebore, some tulips, some black grass, and then we've got these cool things which I bought from the training centre. And they are the Crown Imperial Fritillaries, so Fritillaria imperialis. Um, and they have these amazing white nectaries in the back of them. And then you can see the stamens. And then the female part is pushed back a little bit out of the way. Lots of pollen. And they stink. They smell really, really... Well, you can't smell them from here now, but the bulb and the foliage stinks if it's in a confined space. Quite a savoury, kind of stinky smell. Thank you.